guys, I am thrilled to be here today, but the first thing I need from you is a promise. The journey that we're about to take together is very strange, probably very unfamiliar, and took me a very long time to understand. I need you to commit to keeping an open mind for the next eight minutes. Promise? Promise. Okay. When I say labyrinth, you might imagine this, or this. <laughs> the labyrinth I want you to picture looks something like this. Labyrinths date back as far as 2,000 years ago, but they've morphed into something increasingly relevant in today's culture. Labyrinths are used as a meditative and creative tool. I walk labyrinths because often I have so much going on around me that I need a quiet place to collect my thoughts. I'm also an actress and a writer, and labyrinths can be an outlet for me to get words on paper or look at my 360 degree surroundings in a completely different way. Now you may be thinking, good for you, but what do I do? Where do I even begin, and why would I want to? Well, the first thing you have to do is find a labyrinth. And trust me, this is not as hard as it seems. In Dallas, there are public labyrinths in Kessler Park, SMU's own Perkins School of Theology, the Children's Medical Center, and many more. Here's a hint. Google Worldwide Labyrinth Locator, and you can look up a list of all the labyrinths in your city. I bet there's one much closer to you than you would expect. Now, once you get to the labyrinth, do not be intimidated. It may seem like all the twists and turns and dead ends will keep you from ever getting where you want to go, but if you follow the path, there is no way you can get lost. Here are three steps that might make things a little bit easier to visualize. Step one is release. Take a deep breath and begin your walk to the center. This is a time for you to calm down, take a, get focused, and center yourself. Let go of everything you've been carrying around with you, whether it be stress or expectations, or in my case, a mix of both. Step two is receive. The center is a sacred space for you to gain something from your walk. It's often abstract, and for me, it changes each time. While I'm in the center, I might need some quiet, or I might need to really think hard about something. There's no set length of time you remain in the center. That's really up to you. Step three is return. Your walk back out is a transition from the world of the labyrinth back into your ordinary life. You return armed with your new knowledge and new peace. Labyrinths have recently become very personal to me because of an amazing trip I took this summer. I traveled to France with a group called Sacred Sites Quest International Exchange, and we built a labyrinth in the most historic site in all of Lyon the third largest city in France. Before arriving in Lyon, we toured France in search of labyrinths all over the world, all over the country. And because Europe is where labyrinths took root centuries ago, and, they, um, and where they grew into this cultural artifact that they are today. This is a finger labyrinth in a tiny, tiny chapel in Genainville which is a village with a total population of 564 people. It's about this big, and it's thought to have been found underneath the chapel during renovation. This is the Amiens Labyrinth. It's octagonal, so it's a little different. Um, and this is the outside of this stunning cathedral. And here comes the real heart wrencher. If you ask anyone who knows anything about labyrinths, the first place they'll mention is the Chartres Cathedral. It's like the king of all labyrinths. However, while we were there, the Chartres Cathedral was undergoing a much needed renovation, which meant that this renowned labyrinth was completely covered in plywood. We didn't even get to see it. This is where the labyrinth should have been, but as you can see, it's covered up by a forklift. Fortunately, this opened doors for us to walk what I affectionately refer to as the secret garden labyrinth. 
It was in a private hotel garden just down the street from Chartres, and it's an exact model of Chartres, so which means all the dimensions and design is the same. It was so intimate and unlike anything we had seen, and I have seen, ever. Um, this, could you go back a slide, is that okay? Thank you. Um, now, in Lyon, there is a big hill overlooking the entire city. It's got a panoramic view. And it's in between a city landmark and a centuries-old cathedral. And we were building in a garden right in the middle of the two. This is a postcard I found from 1917. And right where that arrow is pointing is where our labyrinth is. This is our view. And this is our finished product. It took us a little under three days. First, we had to spray paint the concentric circles onto the grass, and then we had to dig the trenches and lay in the pavers, which are the bricks, so that they were perfectly level with the ground. This is my favorite picture from the trip of my best friend and me in the center, right before we said goodbye to our labyrinth and left for the airport. Now, more importantly, uh, this trip shaped the way I look at the world. I not only fell in love with France, but I discovered history and art and geometry and a strange camaraderie that came with being one of a few people who realized the deep importance of this tool. Before I go, I want to put our project into perspective. One week after we left Lyon, there was a terrorist attack in the city. It was one of three attacks that day across three different countries. A man drove a truck of explosives into an American factory just outside the city and beheaded a manager there. So, just 10 days after we left a monument for peace and connection, there was an attack on peace in the same city. To everyone involved in this project, this was an affirmation of our work. To me, it was a not so subtle nod of the head that our mission was not only valid, but vital. Now, if you've been tuning me out this entire talk, please listen to this. Even if you don't go out and walk a labyrinth, my challenge to you is to keep an open mind to the unexpected. The whole theme of this conference is unexpected. That's why you're here. And yet, sometimes it can be so, difficult, so easy to shut ourselves off from the new and unfamiliar, like a labyrinth. But if you keep an open mind to new knowledge, and a new perspective, you can't imagine the connections you can create. Thank you.